Hello, everyone. This is Jorge Gamboa, and many of my friends also call me Joe. Welcome to another episode of Unstoppable Leaders and to the Spanglish World Network on Singo TV channel 250. Please remember to download both uh, the Singo TV app on your respective app stores, iOS or Android. And while you download it, make sure to rate it and leave a comment. The app is free for everyone. And also, Singo TV is available on Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire and Fire TV, Sticks, Roku, and Roku Sticks, and all smart TVs after 2016. Today, we have an amazing guest. Every now and then, uh, we run into people that just inspire you to take your game, your life to the next level. And today is an honor of having one of those people. So welcome, Chuck. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Jorge, thank you for having me. I've been looking forward to this when Eduardo said, hey, there's this amazing opportunity to hang out with Jorge today. I was like, let's do it. This sounds amazing. Yeah, no, it's awesome. So why don't you tell us a, a little bit about how you got in what, in what you're doing? How, how, what triggered that brain to, to say, this is what I'm going to do now? Well, you know, it's, it's funny. I actually believe that leadership starts at a very young age. And when I was very young, I was actually very shy. Uh, I know that people sometimes, in fact, I would I'd almost make the assertion, Jorge, that people meet you and they go, oh my gosh, this guy can speak to anybody, any place. And then I would also say probably on the backside, even just having just met you now, that you're probably a very high functioning introvert. And so what do I mean by that? Oftentimes leaders will look within themselves to help elevate themselves first, to help grow so that they can actually contribute to others because they love helping people. And I've been this way since I was really young, ran for student body president when I was in seventh, eighth grade, did it in high school, been to leadership summits, and then when I was in my early 20s, my wife and I discovered that we were having a baby. And it was like, whoa, okay, this is new. And so I said, I probably need to start figuring out a little bit more about my life and so that I can be a better husband and father because this kid doesn't come with an instruction manual. And he's the first of our three that we have. And so I started visiting with this big guy named Tony Robbins. And a business associate of mine, I, I ran a mortgage brokerage firm in, in Colorado at the time where we lived. And uh, he was a partner and he goes, hey, let's go see this guy. He has huge hands and big teeth and he's about 6'8". And oh my gosh, he's amazing. And I was like, wow, Michael, you did like Tony Robbins' voice really well. And fast forward to a couple of years ago, I spent 22 years in the Robbins environment, growing, learning, cultivating about how to be a better practical psychologist, how to be a neurostrategist, how to be skilled in neurolinguistics programming, neurosocial conditioning. All those are just a bunch of fancy, fancy titles for how to understand why people do what they do. And what was really neat about this adventure, Jorge, is that it actually made me a much better father, a much better friend, a much better husband. Because now I started to understand not only for other people why they do what they do and help to lead and influence them, not to control them, to give them more options, to help elevate them but I was needed to do it for myself first. And so for that shy introverted kid to be able to start to find his voice. And I would still say, I don't love being in huge crowds. I love being around like-hearted people. Now, there's a distinction there. And for most people that are in leadership, leadership requires a couple things. And I, I love what Simon Sinek says about this. This is oh, huge, huge. And he says, you need to adopt an infinite mindset. Okay, that sounds good on paper. <laughs> what does that even mean? Well, it means a couple things. An infinite mindset means that in the game of life, you only know some of the players. See, in a finite mindset, you know all the players. You know all of them. It's like a roster on a team. Okay, I, I, I can see that. Hmm. What's the second thing? Well, in an infinite mindset, you're looking for other people of aligned values. You have different rules sometimes on how to get there, but you have the same core values. Well, in a finite mindset, there's rules to the game. And if you break the rules, boy, you're in trouble. Oh, you're in deep trouble. Oh, there's penalties and fouls and whistles, the whole nine yards. Some people do this and hey, you get a goal kick. 
It's like, okay, no, 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 no. And then the last part is probably the most imperative though. And this is the one that really got me at the highest level. When we start to look at an infinite mindset, there's no winning or losing the game. It's only staying in it as long as you can. And I was like, oh, isn't that the perfect definition of life? Like life is about living and being. In fact, the definition of life is the culmination of all your experiences. Doesn't say just the good ones. Doesn't say all the bad ones. It says all of your life experiences because you're the total sum of all the challenges, problems. I pray for better problems. Problems are possibilities. Possibilities feed progress. It's like, huh, what does a finite mindset say? There's only winning or losing. And if you're Charlie Sheen, you're winning. And if you're on the other, other team, you're an opponent. I'm like, yeah. I want to live my life with my wife being my opponent because we're not on the same team. It's like, huh. So that was a long-winded response to, I got into this so I could be a better daddy and a husband. So how do you help people that they want to do more but they don't have that drive to just go into all this neuroscience sure. stuff. You know, part of it is, frankly, it's not that they don't have the drive. They just, they haven't given themselves enough priority in their own life to take the time and allocate it. See, if you don't schedule it, you won't do it. Yeah. And so, right. I mean, and, and I know some people who even schedule it and they go, eh, there's still tomorrow. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, as I, as I remind my wife, who's from Nicaragua, I said, we're not on Nika time, sweetheart. That means you don't, you don't show up an hour and a half late. I know that's, 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 uh, fashionably late, but no, because ha being a half Japanese guy with an Irish dad who was in the military, um, you show up, you're on time. If you're not yeah. five minutes early, you're late. <laughs> and so it's like, Boy, we, we, we've come to an agreement frame around time now. I just tell her we have to be there two hours earlier than we need to be. Uh, and so it works out perfect. But here's the ticket. Most of the time, people aren't looking to be told what to do. They want to be shown how to. See, when you're little, you learn how to walk the fastest, to speak the fastest, to learn your mathematics and your English and all of your attributes as far as your academics by watching other people who show you the example and they take you through it step by step. In today's environment, we live in what I will call an instantaneous environment. Mm -hmm. Someone will see a YouTube video, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and there's a lot of and I apologize, I don't mean to offend anyone out there in, in the world of, of media. There's a lot of posers. There's a lot of people who have imposter syndrome, and they will claim to be experts in different fields. In fact, they even have a name for themselves. They call themselves influencers. And it's like, okay, that's lovely. You're an influencer. What value do you create? Have you cured cancer? Are you showing people how to live an ethical and moral lifestyle, how to be healthy and vital? Oh, no, you've shown them how to get lip fillers. Uh, you've shown them how to have a Brazilian bottom lift. You've shown them how to have multiple baby daddies. It's like, wait, what, where's, where's the expertise in that? Where is the enhancing life? And I'm not judging. What I will say is this. We talk about entitlement to a great degree. And what is entitlement? Like the new generation, they're all entitled. And I go, well, they have a right to be. Because we as parents have made them entitled, which means that they, they are in title. They actually are given ownership of things that they didn't even earn. So it's false entitlement. They've been endowed certain things. And they go, but I love my kids and I want them to have a better life than we did. And I was like, well, then you're not mentoring them. Would you just bring someone in your company and give them a million dollars? because they have a pedigree or they're a nice person? And I said, well, probably not. You would mentor them and help fashion them into being a team member in that community. I said, well, if you have a culture in your work, you have a culture in your faith, in your religion, why don't you have a culture at home? So we get to slow down and understand that it's not about us just trying to create monetization around everything we do that actually what you give away for free is actually valuable to a lot of people. But knowledge is not power, Jorge, it's not. 
Knowledge exercised is power. A piece of gym equipment isn't power. What it gives you, if you utilize it properly, amazing results. But it's potential opportunities just that's just sitting there. And yet for some people in their home, it is the most expensive coat rack they own. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So to your point, if someone really wants to learn, I, I only strategize with clients. So in my community, Your Best Life, we're, we're a community of like-minded and like-hearted uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, what we decided was we wanted to create an environment where if we're going to work hard, we're going to play hard. So during COVID, I know this is going to sound crazy. We decided we wanted to travel together. They're like, wait, you wanted to what? Said we had masks on the plane. We had masks when we were at the resort. We were out on the beach and it was open air. We took the masks off. Now, why? Because we wanted to be in places like Costa Rica, um, Mykonos, uh, Eshkoret. We wanted to go to places where we could actually commune together and still grow. And isn't it amazing that not one person contracted COVID when we were together? Not one person got ill or sick. But we learned a lot about faith, family, fitness, and finance. Why? Because if you look at your hand and you just take the four fingers, we'll just take the thumb out of it for a moment. In fact, we could just call this you. 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 And we go faith, family, fitness, finance. If I'm growing in one of these areas, but not the other three, a rising tide sinks all ships. And so if one is anchored down and the rest are floundering or the opposite, if I'm growing in all these areas, but this one is tethered down, you go down with the ship. They're all connected to one another. They're not mutually exclusive. And this is why so many people, even if they have tons of money, tons of perceived control and power, they're not happy. They go, but I have it all. I have it all. I go, do you? You're not happy. And how, how do you bring balance? Because uh, I, I see very often people that have one personality at their work. Mm. And when they go home, it's a different personality. And yes. that is very common, right? Oh. So how can you start bridging that to bring to, to get to that type of alignment that you mentioned? By getting people back to their core values. So there's a couple tenants that go along with this. So I'll use some examples. We all have multiple personalities inside of us. And what happens is, is that in different environments, different parts of your personality come out. So let's say as an example, you're the CEO of a corporation. Well, I will tell you this firsthand. You can be the CEO of your company, but if you try to be the CEO of your wife in the bedroom, you're going to have some problems. If you try to be the CEO of your children, you're definitely going to have some problems because they will call you to the mat in a New York second. Yeah. So the person that shows up in the boardroom in the bedroom are the exact same physical body. The manifestations of who they are can change slightly. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I said, it's actually a beautiful thing. And here's why. Most people don't want to bring the problems that they have in the boardroom to the bedroom. You don't want to be having, you know, a great conversation with your wife and then start going into the analytics of your supply chain management protocol and your middle management challenges. Or you may. I don't know. Maybe she's very adept at business and that's who you go to for your consult. It's not very romantic, though. And then how you show up with your kids if you start talking like, oh, well, let me tell you about standard operating procedures and KPIs. So key product indicators. They're like, wait, daddy, I'm three years old. I just want you to wrestle with me and have fun. Can we run in the park and go play? Can we take the puppy for a walk? Oh, I forgot. So there are times when those modalities of being loving, kind, the magician. So we have all of these different types of personalities that we take on. And what I will say is this, you can elect and choose, my dear friend, how you need to feel most often. So I have a simple exercise. In fact, for everyone at home, if you want to try this, it takes two and a half minutes a day. That's it. That's it. Two and a half minutes. It, it, it's it's life changing, but it does require something. You need to get a journal or a notepad or uh, a legal pad, something that you could write down the day and the time. And the question you'll ask yourself in the morning is, how do I need to feel most often today? And you'll write down the top three ways you need to feel most often that day. Mm -hmm. You'll read it 
three times, set the intention, and go on your day. At the end of the day, you take out the same journal and you write PM, whatever time it is, and you write, how did I feel most often today? See, if we don't measure, you can't move what you don't measure. And what's not moving, you can't measure. So we get to be accountable to ourselves. So we ask ourselves, how do I feel most often today? And here's the most important question. How do I need to feel tomorrow? Notice I'm not saying, how do I want to feel tomorrow? Your wants and needs have different levels of necessity. A need you have to have. I need oxygen. I need water. I need shelter. I need love and connection. I don't need a new Ferrari. The old one's just fine. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> but I need transportation. I want a Ferrari. Oh, could a transportation be a bike? Sure. Could be an electric cart? Sure. That's what a Tesla is. Big, expensive electric cart, but a very nice one. And so why do I go there? At the end of the day, if your wants, if your needs are being met at the highest level, your wants change. Think about this. Have you ever met someone that didn't have wants? If you have children, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, daddy, I want this. I want yeah. this. Why can I have this? Oh, and why? Because they saw a commercial. Yo, know, Marifeli has this. Why can't I have one? Oh, I deal. And so it's like, okay, time out. Let's slow down then. So your, your question is, we can actually make things really simple. If we ask ourselves how we need to feel most often, because if I say happy, valuable, and present, anything I'm involved with at home, in the boardroom, the bedroom, at school, on the playground, in the gym, I'm going to be present. I'm going to be happy. Wow. That feels very good. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have shifts in how we use our mentality. Because what may be required in business is different. What may be required in health and understanding and presence with my wife is different. What may be necessary with my children is different. But I can still have the same amazing emotions and be the same person. And it starts to shift the narrative around who are you? Because I, I have a sneaking suspicion for many people, and it's actually because we've become very poor question askers. I'll repeat that. We've become very poor in how we ask questions, partially because of the way we communicate. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? What's going on? Okay. Instead of picking up the phone. This is called a smartphone, by the way, everyone. It's not just called a smart device. It's called a smartphone. This is actually called an iPhone. Most people don't use it for the phone. They use it for everything else. And I go, it's a communication device, yet it's being used the least for intimate communication and more for generalized or anonymous communication. So why do I go there? Most people will ask you, hey, Jorge, how you doing? And then if I ask you how you're doing, so let, let's just try it on for a moment. Jorge, how are you doing? Um, pretty good. Pretty good. Why only pretty good? What's been going on? Yeah, life is good. Okay. Now, if I ask you, Jorge, how are you feeling? Ah. Uh ah. -huh. It's different, isn't it? Yes. So the power of one word in a question. See, when you ask someone how they're doing, they go into their head. Well, how am I doing? Oh, I'm doing a lot. I'm doing, I'm busy. I've got a lot of things going on. If I ask you how you're feeling, you go, you know what? I feel blessed. I feel happy. I feel really good. I've also had people go, wow, thank you for asking. Uh, today was kind of challenging. Oh, so you're feeling challenged today. Okay. What does that mean to you? Because I'm going to give you uh, three questions that are the secret sauce to help people shift and get clear as to where they're living in a moment, if that's okay. Awesome. Yeah. One is, how are you feeling right now? Not two minutes ago, not five minutes from now, right now. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Be grateful for the present, which is called the gift. It's the present. And now they'll tell you. So, oh, 
So when you're feeling that way, what does that mean specifically to you right now? Oh, well, this is what I take away from feeling this way. Okay. How do you need to feel instead? Huh? Yeah. How, how do you need to feel instead? Are you happy with feeling this way? Oh, no, no, no. Or maybe, yes, I'd like to feel this way more often. Great. Then what would need to happen in order for you to feel this way even more? Even more. Or not. What's interesting about this is you haven't given them any answers. You just ask them much more powerful questions. And they get to actually emote and have the freedom of choice and decision. They may ask you for some clarification. Go, so Chuck, when I'm feeling confused, I said, oh, that's great. That means you're on the verge of a breakthrough. That just means that your mind doesn't know what to do with this. How does that feel to you? They go, oh, it's kind of exciting. Some people go, oh, I'm scared to death. Go, ah, oh, that's interesting. And they go, what? That seems to make you happy. I said, no, I'm, in, I'm intrigued. I'm, in, I'm in inquisitive now. Because what I've found, not saying this is you, but what I found with many people is that oftentimes when they get to this point of fear, I go, all that is is a false expectation appearing real. And I go, what are you afraid of? They go, well, that this could happen and this might happen. I said, but have they happened? No, but it could. And I said, well, frankly, a meteor could, if it took out the dinosaurs, it could take all of us out. I don't know when that's coming, but it could happen. And they go, oh, I guess you're right. I go, well, I'm not trying to be right. Just asking you. So what if we could actually just deal with what is right now and get present? Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be lovely. I go, because this is your life now. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. I pray that none of us see the last thing and it says Greyhound. And it was a bus that <laughs> it could happen. And so... If we're going to live in fear, then what we are going to end up doing is, is we're going to say, frick everything and run. And this is what a lot of people are doing. They're running away from challenges. They're running away from opportunities. And so those three little questions can help because here's how we learn. Number one, we fake it till we make it. How did children learn how to walk? They fake it. <laughs> they, they are they are grabbing onto stuff. They are falling and tumbling and they crawl first, but they're faking it because they're watching everyone else's example. And then they start to copy. And then this is where it gets real. They start to face it till they make it. Because they start going, ooh, I've got these little toes. And I've got these little feet. And boy, when I push my momentum forward, I start going. I can't stop real well, but boy, I can get going. And so in that challenge, they start to build resilience and muscle and tonality and sensory motor coordination and skills and a lot of joy because now they found this new thing called walking, which is freedom. Then they get to the next level, which is they faith it till they make it. And this is where you just see kids, you go, are you crazy? You're going to try and jump that? Uh-huh. You think you're going to make it? I don't know. <laughs> I go, oh my gosh, where did this kid get this drive? Because they have faith. They've experienced a little bit of this progress and they're, oh, they're addicted now because progress equals happiness. So it's part of the human condition and how we start to cultivate and grow together. And I go, oh, this is brilliant. This is brilliant because now this gives us the fuel that we need. Because the one thing that all human beings need, my brother Jorge, is an opportunity. If you don't have what we call compelling future, people start to shut down. This is where they live and they'll settle for being okay. It's a life of mediocrity. And they'll even tell you this. You ask them, how you feeling? I'm okay. Whoa. That's my response to most people when they say they're okay. I go, are you really okay? Because boy, the energy that came with that okay was like, oh, yeah, you say, hey, I'm okay. They go, okay, whoa, well, okay, I, 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 I'm with you. What's, what's, what's been great for you then? And I'll even ask. They go, well, no, I said I was okay. I said, well, what's been great? Because, boy, that was a really positive okay. Or if it's the opposite, they go, what's challenging you right now? How are you feeling? What does that mean? Huh. So 
what I'm finding interesting is that you need to have another person who is really good at asking those questions to bring up that awareness that we lose because we are just following the motions and we are not living in that present. Well, so, actually, here's the truth. Most people do this without even thinking about it. They do. Think about, are you a, are you a parent? Yeah. How many children do you have? You don't mind me asking. Okay. So when they walk in the room and they're like, you go, mija, mijo, como estas? What's going on? How do you feel? Oh, papi. Muy mal. I feel bad. I feel sad. I feel, I'm scared. Okay. What do you, and then all of a sudden it's like that part of you, you start asking better questions. Like, oh, so what was it you thought you saw that made you scared? What are, well, what's making you feel this way? Oh, you don't know? That's okay. Come here. Let me, let daddy help you real quick. And then you start to share energy. Well, that's an exchange of information. Because mm -hmm. they feel safe. And then when you ask, you say, Mija, what was really bothering you? Mijo, what are you feeling? Oh, I feel better now. Okay, that's great. I'm glad you feel better. So now that you're strong, remember, repeat after, repeat after Poppy. I'm strong. I'm happy. I'm brave. Now, how do you feel? I'm strong and I'm happy. I'm brave. <clears throat> you know, like what? It's a girl, man. <sighs> and what's great about that is, is that we try to make this too technical. We believe that we have to go to a specialist. And this is why so many people are in therapy and not getting results. Nothing against therapists, nothing against psychiatrists. The challenge is speaking about the same problem over and over again and not identifying what the cause is and then creating uh, solutions or shifting just keeps them in psychosis, just keeps them in process. That's great if you're looking for billables. I look at it a different way and I say, no, I'm looking at this to give someone their freedom and the opportunity to be able to because I don't want them dependent on me. I need them to be dependent on themselves. So that way when challenges come up, because my friend Jorge, when is challenge going and change going to happen? It's... There's been change in just this yeah. 28 minutes we've been on this session together. And, and it's whatever we're aware of, but let's keep in mind that you're only cognizant of about five or six things happening around you at any given point in time. My energy and intention is here with you. But if I bring my attention to my environment for a moment, there's a ceiling fan with a bright light. I have all these reflective lights around me. So that way I have good lighting in this room. I can hear myself and see you very clearly. I can feel the air blowing on my skin. I am comfortable in this space. Now, why do I share that? Anytime you squirrel away from your primary focus, you lose 85% of your effective efficiency in being present to create value in that moment. Wait, what? So I know some people that they're shiny penny everywhere. It's like, do not take them anywhere near a glitter ball. They'll be like a rabid cat chasing after the laser light. It's not a good look. And yet this is where some people find relationships because they're addicted to variety. They can't stay with one person. Mm -hmm. This is why some people are addicted to money because it's the one thing that they're really good at cultivating and manifesting, but then they think everyone wants the money from them. So now they're more concerned about losing the money to other people or they use it because now it's just a sphere of influence for them and they know they can buy whatever they want, but no one's with them for their true personality, their heart, their integrity. They're with them because of the things and stuff they think they're going to get. Because, oh, come and, you know, spend the weekend with us on the yacht and we'll cruise the islands. And, you know, then when we get picked up, we'll go to this resort and I'll pick you up in my fur. Okay, great. That's lovely. And at the end of the day, I know my wife is with me because when she met me 35 years ago, I was driving a Suzuki Samurai. Yeah, not a player. But she fell in love with a nice, I fell in love with an amazing woman. 
and now we've grown together where now there's more prosperity there's happiness and growth we've always been happy the beautiful part is we just took that happiness and started compounding it with all these amazing adventures and experiences and children and life and what a big difference so i'm going to agree with you that asking questions is important having a phd in question answering or having amazing skill is not important all you need is one thing my brother and that's it you need to be actually it's two things i apologize i fibbed you need to care and be present that's it that's it if you know that someone's listening to you and that their intention is that they care and that they are there in gratitude and appreciation of you to help support you wow because that's what's missing most often today yeah it really is interesting huh yeah no and it's true it's uh, sounds simple but it's uh, quite a challenge for many people to just be present in the moment for for whatever it is that they're doing so uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what is your best life sure how do so you work with that concept and yeah so your best life was this this concept of how do you have a peer group because the top five people you spend the most time with is who you become it's we're creatures of habit we're creatures of, of proximity and those that you spend the most time with you start to adapt and develop similar insights distinctions especially those that you love spending time with if you're in people with, with and you go oh i'm not close with anyone i'm a loner i go oh oh okay that's interesting and then i would ask myself a deeper question to go huh i wonder why they're so afraid of connecting with people because i've been that guy most notably because I didn't feel I was worthy. I really didn't. I was like, oh my gosh, these people are so much smarter than me. They're from Harvard and Yale and, and Cornell and they have PhDs and postgraduate work. And I'm just a finance real estate law major with a, uh, you know, a master's in, in sales management. But I cultivated other skills. I got certified in different technologies. Why? Because I started realizing that if it really is true and that an infinite mindset is where I'm moving towards, then I'm never going to stop growing. I'm never going to stop learning. I'm always going to be taking on new distinctions, new opportunities, because the one constant is change. And you brought up a great point earlier, and I, I really want to commend you for this. There's a huge misnomer and misunderstanding in the world of behavioral sciences and in leadership. And, that, and we hear this term all the time. It's like, oh, I'm looking for the balance. I'm looking for the work-life balance. I'm looking for, you know, that love, romance, balance. And I go, there is no such thing as balance. It, there isn't. There's harmony. Yeah. What, what the natural state and order of things is that everything is seeking harmony. And given the choice, it is life and death. Because life means that you're living. Death is absolute. That means you've been living while dying. I choose to live every single day. I choose that my focus and my outcome, and although, hey, I don't have a PhD in this stuff, and I'm not perfect. There's no such thing as perfection. And I go, then why would I want to live in a world that looks like the Lorax, where every single tree is like a topiary, perfectly spherical, in the exact same shape, has the exact same number of leaves, has the exact same style you know, trunk? I go, no. That's the step for white wife ideology. That is seeking impractical perfection. And for what reason? To say it's perfect? Then why is the human condition that we're all looking to be recognized for who we are? Yet all we're doing is copying other people. We see a fashion statement. Ooh, Gucci, Trudy, Kamali. Oh, Aston Martin, Jaguar, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Rolls Royce. Okay, great. And? Is there anything wrong with the Hyundai? Is there anything wrong with the Yugo? Well, I might draw the line at the Yugo. No, just kidding. Um, I said that one time and I actually had to go, what's wrong with the Yugo? I said, absolutely nothing. The fact that it looks like a lunchbox on wheels is completely up to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He started laughing and he goes, ironically, that's what I love about my car. Um, so here's the deal though. 
The only time we start to suffer through any of this is when we put the myopic focus just on ourselves. See, there's only one person that can suffer, and that's you. And here's the crazier part. Most of the time, you're suffering, and you're like going, oh, I hope they get what's coming to them. Oh, they're such evil people. And I go, wow. You're the one drinking the poison, expecting them to die. You're the one poisoning yourself. Because they're living their life. They're doing their thing. In fact, frankly, I don't even think they're thinking about you. Oh, wait, what? No. If they had a conscience and I said, eh, I don't know. I don't know if they do or don't. And frankly, their opinion of me is none of my business. The only opinions I'm worried, I'm concerned about are the ones of the people that I love and adore and appreciate. And here's the cool part about that. We have what we will call a matching relationship. So for your viewers out there, there's three types of people in this world. There's different levels, but there's three types of people. There's givers, takers, and matchers. Givers give how often, Jorge? All the time, I guess. They can't help it. <laughs> That's just who they are. They're like, I give, I give, I give, I give. Why? Because it actually helps fill them up and makes them happy. Takers take how often? Nonstop. Oh, man. They're, you're like, oh, Gordo. They, they, they're, they just take everything. Love, happiness, money, praise. You know, it's all about them. It's all about them. And then you have the matchers. This is what's really neat about matchers. Matchers can only be matchers when they actually communicate and have an agreement frame. And it's not giving to get. It's not just transactional. It's actually expectations based on values. So if I say, my brother Jorge, you're such a cool guy. I feel your heart, your integrity. I trust you, man. So here's the keys to my condo in Acapulco. Have a great time. Wait, what? Yeah, I trust you. Have a good time with your family. Awesome. People go, wow. The only, th only ask I have is just leave it as clean as it was when you got there. Agreement frame. Awesome. Was there anything else? Nope. Cool. And then you go, oh, thank you, Chuck. That feels really good. Man, we had the best time. It was wonderful. Was like, That's all the things that someone needs when you have an agreement frame. That's what we call matching. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone goes, hey, my matching relationship is I'm going to consult your team and help you increase your revenue. And for that, you're going to be a percentage of the upside. But you only pay me if we help you increase revenue. So if I take you from 10 million to 50 million, I'm going to get 5% of the upside. Are we cool with that? They go, you take me from 10 to 15 or 50 million, you can have 10%. No, I'm, that's not what I'm asking for. The agreement frame is that we're going to go ahead and outside of our relationship, our friendship, I'm going to go ahead and perform at this level. And here's what I am going to provide. Boom, 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 boom. You can check these off. Do we have an agreement around this? Because now what we're doing is managing expectations. The number one in any expectation clause I ever have with anyone is we are going to clearly communicate the outcomes and changes that can be occurring within the environment so that we can come to an amicable resolution as to how to create and collaborate. You know, it's not me going, I'm going to coach you and make sure I give you all the answers. No, because you need to have buy-in. And the only way you can do that is if you're actually engaged in it. So there's very simple ways to live in this. The challenge is this, and it goes back to the very beginning of you know, Article 2 of what Simon Sinek said. Do you share values, honesty, integrity, accountability? I know some people who are honest, but selectively. Accountable, sometimes. They go, well, this isn't going to work unless we are both on the same page. Because if what I think is accountable and what you think is accountable are two different things, that's kind of like going, hey, what's the temperature where you're at today? So if I were to ask you, Jorge, what's the temperature? Oh, like 25 something Celsius. Okay. And I go, hey, he goes, what's the temperature at Dallas? I said, it's 105 Fahrenheit. And people are like, oh, well, what's that in Celsius? I said, it's hot. That's all you need to know. It's hot. 
And people are going, yeah, oh man. So why do I say that? Same, we could, if I was in Mexico and I told my wife, oh, so it's 87 degrees Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit. And she's like, I don't know, that I, I gotta do the conversion. Yeah. But I'm like, well, okay. And she goes, oh, well, that seems like a fairly nice day. I go, oh, it's beautiful out. I go, what's it in Dallas? And if I go, oh, it's 34 Celsius. And you're like, oh, it's what? Like, is that like the surface of the sun? Yeah. But here's the deal. It's the same temperature. We're using different ways of explaining it. And so when you have different measurements, it comes across as being different when the actuality is, is that it's still the same temperature outside. Does that make sense? So there's a lot of miscommunication because, because we are dealing in our terms. And yes, when we take time to understand the translation, it can be very powerful. And people go, oh, but Chuck, you know, for me to find out, I go, Siri, what is 27 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? Ah, oh, okay. Boy, it's a nice day over there, brother. You're having a really nice weather. Yeah. And people go, oh, wow. Was that hard? Said no. Was it resourceful? I don't know. I just asked my smart device for some information. So what is it? Is it being clever? No, it's being present. Being present. And here's the beautiful part about presence. I, I, if, if no one takes anything away from this conversation, but this today as a leader, when you are present, it shows that you care. And when you care, you share. It's a very simple flow chart of engagement. Yet it gives you that opportunity to connect with people, to greet them, to say hello. And sometimes that's all it takes is a moment. It doesn't take all day. It doesn't take a six hour conference. It only takes a few moments. That's why it's not called magic months. It's called magic moments. Because it only takes a moment to impact someone when you're present, when you're sharing, when you're caring. It's that simple. Yeah, no, I, I love the way you put it. It's, and it applies everything, relationship, uh, business transactions, selling, everything. Everything. When you listen, and and for everyone who's looking to make a million dollars in their business, okay, I, I'm just going to give you the secret sauce. Ready? This comes, comes from Keith Cunningham, by the way. So it's not even mine. It's one of my mentors. Keith Cunningham, brilliant uh, economics professor at University of Austin, uh, uber, uber billionaire, raised venture capital money, a remarkable guy. And Keith's a Texan, so he goes, all right, y'all, it's real simple. You ready? Go out and find what's bugging them. Go find it out in the field and then go give it to them. Million dollars worth of sales right there. And people are like, oh, wait, what? He goes, find out what their problem is, go find a solution, and then give it to them. Wait, that sounds really easy. Uh, yeah, if you have this thing called Google and chat GPT 4.0 and Canva and uh, 11 labs. And, uh, I was like, uh, -huh. yeah, it's Alibaba, eBay, uh, Amazon. I was like, there's all these platforms where you can find things and stuff. Do you have to create it? Nope. Can you find it and give it to them? Yep. Wow rocket science uh -uh. presence intention action knowledge without it is just a piece of gym equipment that's become a clothes hanger that's it yeah it's we just complicate things by ourselves it's very simple we do we do and that's where i believe we're all three years old my friend I believe that when we get down to the basics of how we're living and who we are, it comes down to you feel happy, you feel sad, or you feel okay. Ask a three-year-old, I'm happy, I'm sad, 
I'm okay. And when they're okay, they're indifferent. But here's the thing about comfort. I'd rather they be sad, truthfully, than be okay. And here's why. In okay, there's no learning. Doesn't mean they have to be happy or sad all the time. Just means that when we're in process, we can create engagement for understanding. So now they're getting lessons, even though it doesn't have to be painful. Hmm. Most of the time we link sad to pain. I go, no, sad can just be that you're disappointed or frustrated or aggravated, or if you've been caught in a procrastination. I go, that can be shifted very easily. But do you want to be in control or do you want to have an experience? Or can it be both? I'm not judging. I'm just saying. Yeah. Very well said. So as we are approaching the, the end of the show, why don't you share oh, a little bit about your own podcast, <laughs> your own show? Well, oh, thank you. So every Thursday at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, um, I have the privilege of hosting Your Best Life with Chuck Hogan. And it really is about exactly like this. And I'd love to have you on, Jorge, to, to have a, a spirited discussion about life and fatherhood and business. Um, we made a commitment that we were going to, to the masses, give programming and information, bring on very talented speakers in the realms of faith, family, fitness, and finance, and to help them understand that they're not broken, that you are where you're at because you've been willing to tolerate a certain level of persistence. So whatever resist is going to persist. Ask yourself some better questions. Dare to dream big and offer yourself an opportunity for growth and expansion. And through some simple processes and asking these different things, like even just setting that two and a half minutes a day aside for you, self-care is not selfish. It's necessary. When you put the oxygen mask on you first, you start to find that it's much easier to see who else needs oxygen too, because now you're not passed out. So your best life in the show is really about that. It's a, a true calling. I'm so blessed that, that uh, the executive producer, Eduardo Harari and, and the team have allowed me to, to indulge in this. And for me, it's what I feel God and the universe put me on this planet to do is to help people. And this is just another way to do it on a more global level and get some great information out that primarily isn't mine. I, I just get to be kind of the proctor and the MC and, and have a great time and asking some questions. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. And, and thank you for asking that it really, I, I'm, I'm grateful to be here with you today. Yeah, no, it's been a pleasure. I'm very insightful. I, I, I love uh, the contributions, the insights that you shared, very valuable and practical. Oh, thank you. So. Once again, thanks, Chuck. Um, for everyone else, uh, thanks for watching. Remember, uh, this episode, you can also watch it on uh, the Spanish radio network. Listen to it. And uh, stay tuned for future programs. Uh, feel free to join Chuck on, on Thursdays and uh, Spanish world. Uh, live it, see it, watch it, and enjoy it. Thanks, everyone, and have a good one. Or maybe not yet. You know what? Hey, if they haven't pulled the hook on us yet, um, I was going to say something too. Thank you, uh, Jorge. I actually do another show on Monday nights as well called Live Now with Vinu Keller. And uh -huh. that one is another one that's about, it's wonderful because it's great to have a, a co-host and we banter back and forth. But what's brilliant about her, she is known as the child whisperer. And she, oh, she's remarkable. Uh, she has Vinu Inspires. It's actually her shows on Thursdays after my show, uh, which is, it's crazy. I know we're like this one big Spanglish world network family. Yeah. Love it. Um, but what's great about that show is that, again, we go deep. And it's really about being raw and real. Now, I want to thank you for your line of questioning today, because it really is important to understand that when we're having this dialogue, that it really is about connecting and being real with people. No one's looking for processed or canned questions. So I love that this is organic and that we get to have this great conversation. Because um, what makes you unstoppable as a leader 
is actually you. Congruency, authenticity, being genuine. And I find that most people are seeking to be unique and different. Then I get confused as to why they're copying other people. I'm like, because you're already unique and different. Be original. Yeah, it's that famous word, authentic. Be uh, yourself. Why not? That's it. Another black Lamborghini is just another black Lamborghini. It's not that it's not beautiful, but it's not original. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh, is it for status? I said, that's different. But someone comes by in a bright, uh, you know, azul yeah, <laughs> you know, Lamborghini. You're like, oh, 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 I've never seen that color before. And I go, why? Because that person is crazy. Like that, that person is, they're out there. And you're like, I yeah. need to meet them. I need to meet that guy or that gal. And they go, isn't that interesting? And they go, why? I said, because they're that unique. And they're not afraid to express it and show it. It's like, ah, uh, okay. See, I, I, I applaud that. I, I think that is so cavalier. And not for shock value. Not for shock value. There are people who literally will go to a fine dining restaurant wearing sweatpants and a tank top. They're like, oh, sir, you need a jacket. So they'll put on a sweat jacket. True story. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. But because of their status, they're like, going, okay, well, we'll give you a table in the back so no one sees you. We'll let you out, you know, the back doors. I go, well, my car is parked out front. So what's the difference? And I said, presence. The people who make the rules are the ones that break the rules. The Stephen Jobs of the world, the Warren Buffetts of the world, the Elon Musks of the world. Who decides to take on all the big auto manufacturers and come out with electric cars? Oh, Elon. Who decides to take on NASA and launch private rockets and then not just pick up the parts, but have them self land themselves when they come back to Earth? Yeah, it's quite impressive. It is. Yeah, so, so we can get reasonable. I, I'm going to see if our fearless leader. <laughs> He got abducted by aliens, probably. I, I, I'm sure that he has a lot going on. Yeah. It's been and, a busy week. Yes. And I'm sure he will edit this portion out. Uh, being present and curiosity. Yes. Together, authentically. Absolutely. What, what have you found for you? Jorge has been the most elevating part of hosting the show. Uh, how every guest has their own story and they have their own universe that I had no idea it even existed. Mm. So it just it's it's amazing to, to what's happening out there. It takes you out of your little bubble where we live. It sure does. I, I love that. That you that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, it, it is amazing to see the experiences that people have. Yeah. And oftentimes we think that change has to take a long time. And I go, I know people that went from being broke to send deca, you know, tens of millions to hundreds of millions of dollars in the span of a couple of years. And they're living a completely different lifestyle than before. And now their challenges are what I call 21st century challenges. They're like going, oh, well, how does it feel to fly in a private plane? How does it feel to drive in a McLaren or a, a Rolls Royce? And they're like, oh, what? They're like, yes. How do, I mean, because when you've been flying private, you're like, oh, we got to fly coach? We got to fly commercial? Like, are you kidding me? You're flying to Singapore. You're not flying your own private jet over there. Or maybe you are, I don't know, maybe you have a Boeing BBJ. The point of being is expectations are set by the lessons and learnings that we go through. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I know people that even into their early 20s and 30s had never flown on a, on a plane before. And it's like, wow, really? And they're like, going, yeah, is that bad? And they go, we didn't know any better. We were happy, but well, no, then, I know some people have been flying since they were born. 
I know some people who are conceived in the air. I mean, just because they have a lot of money doesn't mean that they're happy. Yeah. Uh, and that's what these type of shows do, right? Yes. Because you don't know what you don't know. So exactly. one episode at a time, it starts expanding. And perspective is everything. Yeah. There's a great movie that's a children's movie called Ratatouille. Yeah. And this uh, critic named Ego says, you bring your best and I'll bring the perspective. It was like, oh, okay. Challenge accepted. Exactly. And then he makes a peasant dish called ratatouille. And it's like, wow, made out of zucchini. And it is the most delicious and effervescent and childhood experience. It takes him back to his childhood. Why do I go there? When things, and that's why, like, well, you've probably heard this as well. I've heard this from a lot of family members. I, we have a couple of chefs in the family, and I love to cook as well. And my mother, who was a culinary teacher in Japan, where I'm from originally, she expresses love through food. And so when she sees you, it's like, oh, honey, it's so good to see you. Are you hungry? Yeah. I'm like, oh, mom, I just got here. I know. Let me look at you. Yep, you could eat. I'm like, oh, wait, how do, you, how do you know? What? Are my ribs showing? Like, what are we talking about here? And But that's just her way of showing love. She goes, are you sure? I've got plenty. I go, Mom, I know you have plenty. You know, what about Dad? She goes, oh, don't worry about him. I'll feed him later. And I was like, oh, wait, Mom, Mom, okay, time, time out. I said, I love you. Just give me a hug. I'm, I'm going to fill up on the dew of the universe right here. Just give me a big hug. And... So why is that important? People have different ways of communicating and expressing themselves. And it's our privilege to learn how they communicate. Like I can pick up on a fair bit of Spanish, but if you did this simulcast in Espanol, I probably would not have been able to be as comfortable as doing this in English. So mm -hmm. muchas gracias. I appreciate it. And it's important because at times, even the difference between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Yeah. There's things get lost in translation. And what I'm finding is in most relationships and most miscommunication, this is exactly what happens that people get stuck in miscommunication because they haven't taken the time to clarify. Say, what does that really mean to you? When you say this, what does love mean to you? This is what love means to me. Oh, so when you say you love me, that's what you mean. Uh huh. When you when then when you say you love me, it's like I didn't mean that. Oh, oh, my bad. <laughs> okay, I saw that go a whole different way. And when you get the clarity, you're like, going, now I know. Now I know. And knowing is ninety percent of it. Yeah, eliminate that room for misinterpretation. That's. It, it is, and it's amazing that that 10% can actually affect the 90%. Mm -hmm. So how important is that? And I go, ooh, uber important. I said, I think so. I think so. Well, you've been a, a pleasure and, and, a, and a gracious host, and thank you. I'm, I'm very grateful for this time with you today. Yeah, no, it's enjoyable. I love it. Excellent. I think, we're, I think we should just drop, because that way it, it will ended on our side yeah yeah well thanks again have a good one and well, talk to you soon enjoy your weekend mucho gusto bye